guys, Laura from What Laura Likes. I don't have a script today, but what I want to talk about is a little bit from the gospel um, and just call those of you who are feeling called to, to encourage you to start your own YouTube channel, to start a Facebook page, I don't know, some other kind of social media page, maybe an Instagram account. I just want to encourage you. Um, we all know that through baptism and then through confirmation, we are tasked with both being priest, prophet, and king. So I'm going to touch on the whole prophet side of this. And I actually, in my Eucharist video, I had a whole section where I was really on fire and I was calling you guys to, you know, really step outside your comfort zone and, prof you know, be a prophet to anyone who the Lord has put in your path. And I had to edit that part out which is too bad. But some things have happened lately, um, and I'm not going to go into specifics, but I just want to really encourage you, if you are being called to share the faith, to do so. But there's a caveat. Only share the faith if you know your faith. Okay, because I know I've even misspoken at times. Um, a lot of times, sometimes early converts, can misspeak because they're still like, learning the faith. It's really, really important before you get onto camera to have some idea of what you're talking about in terms of Catholic teaching. And if you're gonna call yourself a Catholic on YouTube, I think that it's really important that you follow Catholicism and the faith of Catholicism to a T. So what they're teaching is about marriage, what their teaching is about gender, what their teaching is about life at conception, you know, so abortion, all the way through natural death, so euthanization or um, self, um, doctor says suicide, just death penalty, to really understand the social teachings before you get on camera and call yourself a Catholic and speak about them. I think that's really, really important because, you know, it used to be that you have to get the bishop's permission to be any kind of public speaker about the faith. And there's some great wisdom to that because a lot of us can just pop on here and start talking about doctrine and start talking about dogma and perhaps be misleading people. And we have to answer for that um, in the future. But suffice to say, if you do know doctrine, if you are a traditional Catholic, an Orthodox Catholic, if you love Jesus Christ in the Eucharist, if you believe in the true presence, if you are praying that our church returns to a level of reverence that has lost. If you understand why, you know, we genuflect to the tabernacle and not to the altar. If you, I mean, I could just go on and on about um, the, even just the gestures and the proper stances and mass. And um, if you're a Catholic who understands all that, I highly, highly suggest that you start a channel or Instagram page or a Facebook page or um, some kind of social media or, you know, join the, um, the street evangelization or teach at your religious education program. We need strong, solid Catholics to be speaking out about Catholicism because there's just so many people out there who, who either, whether they're Catholic or Protestant, they just don't understand the truth. They don't understand the fullness of truth. They don't understand the deposit of faith. And so, they can lead others astray through their ignorance or through their pride, um, which, you know, devil's main tool, right, is pride. So you have to come to a place in front of a camera with humility and really just letting God use you. But to bring this back to the gospel today, you know, the gospel was, I love this, you know, you know, I've come to set the world on fire and how I wish it was already blazing. I mean, that is so true on so many levels. You know, the, he, we all have this fire kindled within us in baptism. Um, and I've seen it go out in people. I've seen it simmer down to the smallest. And I've seen it explode in people, including myself and experiencing that. And so ideally, we stoke the fire our whole lives. And that is the goal as a Catholic parent, that we stoke our child's, children's fire. Um, and so that it never does get to that point where it's dwindling and the world starts to affect us in really strong ways. But it can happen. And so it's just so important to give our fires the oxygen it needs. And so, and then, you know, so then we need people who are, who are on fire speaking out. Okay. 
hands down, the world needs that. People are way too quiet. I heard a story, or I had a commenter actually once say that um, she grew up with Catholic neighbors, and that one person never invited her to Mass. And then she, in her 60s, I think she said she finally converted, and she was a little upset about no one having like extended just that offer to her. Now, whether she would have accepted it back then, who knows? And so, I mean, we can look back and, you know, past tense is 2020. But what I, what I get from that and what that makes me kind of think about is that it's important to invite. At least putting that idea in their head that there's another path, that maybe you're on a different path. And then, of course, we evangelize just the way we act, joyful and suffering, joyful just, you know, throughout life and different things that life throws at us, good or bad. You know, we don't get too prideful when things go well, and we don't get too sorrowful when things go poorly, because it's just, it's not about this life. This is, like St. Paul said today, you know, life is a race, and we are just trying to shed off as many layers of sin as we can so that we can flee so quickly to that finish line and be in that cloud of witnesses with the saints who are cheering us on every day, which is why you should be praying to the saints, because... They're cheering us on. And then, you know, and then he talks about daughter against da mother and mother against daughter and, and that dynamic. And my priest did a really good job today of talking about, you know, he said that he's going to be, bring peace to those who do his father's will, but Jesus never said he was bringing peace to the entire world. He's the Prince of Peace, but you have to accept him and be receiving his grace to receive that peace. It's, you can reject Jesus. And it bounce, that peace bounces back. Just like Father was saying, you know, when the disciples went out and you, they would go to a house and say, peace be with you. And if that house received them in peace, then they received the peace of, you know, Jesus. But then if they didn't, if they rejected the disciples, then that peace went back to the disciples. And, and then they moved on and they shook the dust and things. So that's a really important thing to remember is that we can't, we can't change everybody. We can't convince everybody. Jesus couldn't even convince everybody. I mean, look at what happened after he said, eat my flesh and drink my blood. And like, everybody leaves, right? And it was not being metaphorical, people. <laughs> he was literally talking about it in the Eucharist because, and everyone left because it's a hard teaching. And it is a hard teaching. And many people leave the Catholic Church and many people apparently don't believe today. And many Protestants, it's this huge roadblock to becoming Catholic because they don't understand transubstantiation. I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm just trying to encourage you that if you do have that peace of Jesus, if you do understand your faith, if you are one of those Catholics that say, I get it, I love it, I'm there every Sunday, I go to daily Mass, I go to adoration, I, I do whatever I feel is most reverent, you know, I, I obey the Church's teachings, I understand the Church's teachings, <sighs> we need your voice out there. We just, we do. So this is just an encouragement to be that prophet because our times are so crazy. YouTubing is not for the faint of heart. It's not. People are going to say things about you. They're going to do things to you. They're going to take your words the wrong way. They're going to write you emails and comments and think they're going to try to save you from Catholicism or save you from your bigoted ways. And, you know, again, because they're coming from a place of the world. And and you just, this today's gospel, today's homily, all of today's liturgy, was so, so good. I'm actually going to link down Bishop Barron's homily for today because it was fabulous. Um, I wish I could have recorded my priest's homily because it was wonderful as well. And of course, I'll put the readings down below too in case you don't track the readings and you just want to know what I'm talking about like specifically. But they were just so good for this ministry specifically. For any kind of ministry where you're going to get lashed back, um, where you're going to be ridiculed. I mean, Jeremiah was stuck into the mud and... Um, and we all, all of us who get out here and pro proclaim the gospel, proclaim Catholicism, is, Catholicism is truth, I and mean, Catholicism isn't, you know, it's a religion, but we're worshiping Jesus, and it's just the idea that we're worshiping Jesus in the way he asks us to. Um, and, and so anyway, and, well, yeah. So, I think that's what I want to say. Um. I hope this was helpful for somebody. Let me know down below if you've considered becoming a YouTuber or want to become a YouTuber. I have a video on how I YouTube, if that would help you kind of see what goes into it. One video a week, I don't know, five or ten hours maybe, maybe, um, and from 
the thought process all the way through to like administering comments and posting on social media and things. So it's not an undoable time commitment. Um, I definitely wouldn't get into it for the money. Um, that does come, but it's in the Catholic real world, it doesn't come quickly. I'm a year and a half in and I don't make anywhere near some kind of income at this point. So uh, you have to really do it for for others, really, to help. But gosh, I really believe that Jesus is going to ask us how many souls we brought to heaven with him. And whether that's somebody that you can touch that's returning to the faith, touch someone who considers becoming Catholic. Um, of course, I'm not telling people to just become Christian and accept Jesus because that's not my message. My message is that the truth is found in the Catholic Church. The truth is found in Mother Mary and in loving Jesus through her. Um, if you guys are confused about that at all, I just said if you get 33 Days of Morning Glory or you can get like Secrets of the Rosary by St. Louis de Montfort, um, but either of those books are going to help you kind of wrap your head around what do we mean when we say that we reach Jesus through Mary. Um, it's, it's pretty cool. So, okay. I can mean I could ramble on about Catholicism forever. But I just, yeah, I just wanted to say a little bit about today's readings and just encourage you. Encourage you to be that prophet because we're all called to be prophets. And how that looks for everybody is different. But don't be afraid to let God use you to be a tool for God because it will be a blessing amidst the, amidst the persecution, amidst the, I mean, it humbles you and it helps you grow in virtue and that's the point anyway, right? So who cares what people say? Who cares what people do? Who cares if they misunderstand you? Like, that's, you pray, you pray for them because that's all you can do because God loves them as much as he loves me or you or anybody, right? They're his child too, and he wants them to come into this place of peace. And when we when we get upset with other people and we and we react, it's not upset. It's not from a place of peace. So praying is definitely the best solution to any problem. And I just want to encourage you for that. So God bless. Have a very very beautiful day. Have a beautiful Sunday. And um, I'll talk to you guys real soon. Bye.